Welcome everybody. Hopefully uh, this last minute uh, post to uh, get the um, link out to you on Facebook is uh, not going to be a problem and everybody will be able to jump in at some point in time. Uh, it's been a crazy day uh, getting ready for flying out tonight, but also, uh, you know, with uh, new training sessions and new, you know, new owners and stuff, you know, getting them set up and running. Um, you know, those training sessions today were, were great, but uh, uh, some ran a little bit long. Some had to, you know, postpone um, so I could get here to the class. But nevertheless, um, hopefully we can... Uh, get everybody back in for tonight and um, come in uh, and finish up this jewelry box. You know, this jewelry box and jewelry box design and everything. So, uh, welcome Tim Guba and uh, Glenn Jones, uh, Dave Garbett. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And all of you that are uh, watching on Facebook, if you're watching on uh, Facebook, uh, be sure you can, you know, you can use the comments of the post where the video link is uh, you can use the comment section to post comments and that'll be treated just like a um you know a comment in the actual live uh you know on youtube so i'll be monitoring both of those and uh we'll um you know get everybody that that can um at some point in time you know you can always if you want to participate in the live stream in the live chat uh, on uh, YouTube, you can set up a YouTube account by going to youtube.com and uh, clicking on the sign up button and then clicking on more options and just create a YouTube account. You don't have to create a YouTube channel or anything like that, but you can create a YouTube account which will allow you access to uh, coming into you know live streams. You know, not just my stream, but any live stream you want to participate in or um, you know video or group or event or anything like that. So uh, for those of you that are uh, you know joining me on the live stream welcome again and for those of you that are joining me on Facebook welcome welcome all right we're gonna give it just a few minutes I kind of put an announcement out that we'll be starting at 715 uh, it's at 709 my time now here we'll get a few minutes uh, in the meantime hopefully uh, some other people will uh, come in and uh, you know join us that are getting kind of a last-minute notification from me it's my fault uh, but uh, um, that uh, that I'm a little late uh, getting the, the channel and everything up. Uh, Glenn, I am uh, uh, Casey, uh, Kentucky. Um, will you be doing classes or just intro presentations? Uh, do we have a class in Kentucky? Is it, do we have a woodworking show in Kentucky? Um, why doesn't that sound from why doesn't Kentucky sound familiar for the woodworking shows? Uh, I don't know why that doesn't sound familiar. Do we have a class in Kentucky or, a school, or not a class but a show? There are so many that we do through the year and I can't remember where my Kentuckys are. So bear with me. England, Tampa, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Kansas City. KC, are you meaning Kansas City for KC or are you meaning Kentucky? <laughs> You're probably meaning Kansas City. Uh, Kansas City, thank you very much. How stupid am I this evening? Um, yes, Kansas City. We have a uh, Monday, or I'm not sorry, Monday, uh, Friday. Oh, let me make sure. I, look, one of these shows is a two day only show, so bear with me. Uh, 16th and 17th. Yeah. Kansas City is not a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday show. It is only a Friday and Saturday show uh, in Kansas City. And so, and that show runs. Uh, from Friday, uh, February 16th, 12 p.m., uh, 12 to 6 on Friday, and then uh, from 10 to 3 on Saturday. There is no Sunday show, Sunday for the Kansas City show. And so on those Friday and Saturday, we will be doing, um, we will be doing classes. Uh, I do a um, uh, introduction to CNC class. Um, exploring CAD CAM design class and then on uh, Saturday afternoons uh, which it'll be a little bit earlier normally it starts at three o'clock because uh, normally the Saturday classes don't end till, or the Saturday shows don't end till six but with this one ending at three 
Um, that'll kind of get some things changed around. But uh, we normally have a paid class uh, on Saturday from, normally it's from 3 to 5. Uh, in this case, it might be from 1 to 3. Uh, or, or something like that. Uh, I, I'm assuming nobody has told me if the Saturday class, the paid advanced class for Saturday is getting uh, canceled because it's only a two-day show. I will have to find that out and confirm that, and I will post that in the Facebook group to make sure that, uh, you know, I'll let everybody know that plans on attending Kansas City. Um, if uh, there is a paid class, what days or what times uh, that class will be held, but if not, there will be just the free classes, uh, which are the regular basic uh, CNC classes. Um, yes, Larry, uh, I'm sorry you had a hard time finding me, uh, but I'm glad you did. Um, <laughs> Kansas City, Kentucky, same thing. <laughs> right, Tim, right, right. Well, you know, uh, what is Kentucky's abbreviation? KY, right? KY is Kentucky. Uh, I don't know why I thought KC was Kentucky's uh, abbreviation. Um, been one of them days. Um, hello, John. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So uh, we're a couple of minutes away from kickoff. It's not a football game, but you know, you know. Um, uh, bear with me one second. Uh, I'm uh, let me. I'm telling someone that I'm in a live class. And then we'll get uh, rolling. And I can. Um, Take calls after that if you guys have to call me for anyone. Uh, someone else here does. I can take calls after. All right. So uh, KYKC22221, whatever it takes. <laughs> That's funny, Glenn. Oh my gosh. Um, too hilarious. All right. So we're going to go ahead and let's uh, jump over into the Vetric. Uh, and um, we'll uh, start, uh, kind of pick up where we left off. So let's get on over there and and uh, get things rolling. All right. So the um, I'm gonna turn on my public view. Let me turn my my sound down so you guys can see what's happening on. Uh, all right. Now, when we left off, uh, we had created, if this is your first time uh, with, with, if you weren't here for part one, that video is on the YouTube channel. And you guys might have noticed I started making the videos public so you can access them on the YouTube channel. Uh, I got to clean them up. I want to do some nice stuff. I want the channel to have a consistent look and feel to it and, and everything. So not only is there going to be those, these live streams on this class, um, but we're also, I'm also going to be creating videos that are not live, just project, uh, how to tutorials, uh, very short, uh, tutorials, maybe, uh, you know, goal specific or, you know, tool specific or something like that. And those are going to start, we're going to start populating this channel. And then of course, all the back classes have to be on there as well. And so as soon as we'll start populating that channel up a little bit more and get it built up, uh, the where it should be. But if you weren't with me for part one, in part one, we set up a two-sided job in Vetric V9. Uh, as you, uh, If you are not aware, in the V9 version of the Vetric software, we have the ability to set up a single-sided job or a double-sided job. And so um, we set a, went ahead and set up a double-sided job because we're going to be cutting on the front and back of these panels. And the... Uh, front panels, so the front of the panels are going to have a decorative design uh, carved into them, and the um, back sides. If we flip over to the back sides of the panels, they are going to have their rabbits and dados. And let me turn those vectors on 
so you can see them. They're going to have the, the vectors for the rabbits, not dados. I don't know why I said dados, but for the rabbits for, you know, cutting these panels. Now, there's a couple of other vectors that I want to draw on this back side because I would like, it would be ideal for me, I was thinking about this, but for the, the tops of the box um, where the lid is going to hinge, I would actually like the router bit to uh, create a small little uh, you know router hinge mortise uh, you know we'll call it that uh, where the hinge goes in I'd like it to create a little small um, you know hinge slot on the side so I'm basically gonna have the router bit uh, if we could simulate this um, and I'll zoom in a little bit but I want to have the router bit come over off to the side or the yeah the side of the board but you know which would which would basically be the you know the the side panels but I would like it to cut a small uh, mortise uh, very shallow small mortise here for the hinges now of course I'm gonna have a little bit of squaring up and clean up and chisel work to do on those mortises but if I can get the router to do you know uh, to to hog away most of the little material uh, coming back and straightening up the those that curve from the radius of the bit and uh, cleaning up the you know uh, that curve and everything uh, and kind of squaring it off uh, would be very easily with you know some chisel work and stuff um, to uh, detour uh, hey Ronald how are you welcome for joining us uh, DF crafting how are you doing buddy and uh, Juan Rodriguez thank you for joining us and um, I appreciate all of you okay so you know i'd like to you know i want to create the vectors where the hinges are going to go uh on the back side panel only you know um uh, where that hinge slot's going to go and it's going to be a hidden hinge mortise it's not going to cut all the way through it's not going to cut through the full depth of the three quarters of an inch uh it's only going to take off a small little mount you'll see that in the 3d preview when we preview the tool pass and stuff but i just want to kind of explain that so I do want to draw those in, but let's pop back over to the front side here and um, let's turn off. I've got the back rabbit vectors on their own layer and um, I've got the front panels and the back panels on their own layer so I can kind of work with the, you know, in the same project and everything with everything. Now, the one thing I haven't uh, figured out for myself yet is um, I wanted to be able to use a smaller board um, when I am creating this cut, but by uh, for the for the for the two side pieces, uh, rather than my 26 inch long board, you know, I didn't want to have to cut another 26 inch long board. But my problem with that is is when I flip that board over uh, to do the other side to cut the um, any back work that needs to be done, and really there's not there there's only the bottom groove you know, for the back panel. Uh, if you take a look at, uh, let's turn off my front panel and turn my side panels on. I'm just using, and you can you can see by um, this kind of fainted, it's hard to see this fainted green line here showing, uh, you know, where my board was, kind of like a simulation. Uh, let's see, I think I had that reference outline. There we go, that red line there, that's a little bit easier for you to see. Um, I have it, you know, just this red reference line is showing the board size that I wanted to use to cut the two side panels out. I didn't want to have to have another piece of walnut because I'm going to be making this out of walnut. I didn't want to have, have another 26 inch long piece. But my problem comes when I flip to the back side. When I flip to the back side, notice that everything that was on the left is now on the right over here. So... Uh, you know my grooves and stuff those grooves and all that should be, not be there. They need to be over here um, Those not those shouldn't even be there to begin with. Let me turn those off. Um, those are my reference line um, Vectors uh, What are these guys let me see where let me bear with me a second let me Move this stuff I don't know how something got moved or not. 
All right, now I can turn those reference lines off. But anyway, when I flip this board over uh, end to end, um, the short board, my corner where I'm referencing off of is way over here basically. Uh, but this job is referencing off the bottom left corner of a 26 inch long board. So it kind of throws me into a little bit of a pickle. Um, and Jared, you're exactly right. Thank you. You know, Jared's, Jared's got it. See, Jared is, Jared's on the ball. So from that end to end flip that I wanted to do originally along my X axis, it's not going to work. So what that means is I have to come into the job setup and I have to set the flip direction from the length, you know, the X axis to the Y axis. So I'm flipping just, you know, I'm just flipping on its side so everything stays in position. And by doing that, and it's going to want to recalculate some tool pass and stuff. Uh, let it kind of get those done and everything. And this little graphic that you see at the bottom of the screen, that's a new floral pattern that I want to see to try to use in these panels. Um, let me see here. It's almost finished calculating those tool paths. When I made that change in my job setup, it goes through and kind of changes all the tool paths. Uh, so it's updating them. There we go. All right, so all the tool paths were successfully created. But now let me turn those tool paths off because I don't want them visible while we're talking about this right now. And let's go and look at what's happening now. So I'm going to turn my uh, reference outline back on. And so now if I did use a shorter board, now I'm going to be flipping uh, from side to side. And uh, by, by doing that flip from side to side, I can now, if I look at the bottom side, everything is where it needs to be now i need to get rid of that uh tool path i thought i just unchecked it oh i didn't let's turn that off um my again my reference lines are not in the correct position so let me turn those off now but now i can i'm be referencing off my left panel so everything works out fine so jared great call that's exactly what needed to be done um i just had to change the flip direction when i'm flipping this board so that means that I have to also look at, you know, my um, uh, my uh, where I'm going to set up my alignment pins and all that stuff. And basically, my alignment pins are going to be the same place. I'm just going to, you know, um, make sure that I flip in the proper direction, left or right. All right, so let's uh, go back to our top side, and let's go back to our front panel. And when I left you guys. Uh, last week I had brought in uh, this flourish type design here and I thought you know it would look really really nice uh, with these uh, openings here that I could do something with I could I could cut and carve a maybe a 3d little medallion that can go in there to really uh, you know maybe maybe if my my box is walnut I could cut a maple medallion uh, to go in there or something something of a contrasting color uh, to fit in here and so I want to explore that uh, a little bit today and but I also at the same time I also if I turn this off I created this flourish and I didn't create it I traced this flourish uh, and I want to move this over to the uh, front panel uh, layer so that I can I had to grab it so that I can come over here and talk about it so on this flourish here, let me zoom into it. Uh, I thought that because it is a it is a tileable file, meaning that I can make multiple tiles to to finish off the designs, whether I go left, right, up, or down. Uh, I thought it would be kind of a cool pattern, and also because I want these to be raised, you know, kind of like a, that island style effect. Uh, that it would be a nice uh, a nice looking piece. So I'm gonna be we're gonna be creating tool pass for both designs, um, but I wanted to show you this the second one here. And this was just a, a you know a bitmap image that was traced. So all it is is just a you know a tracing a vector from there. Uh, and I haven't put it into place or anything like that yet. And we're gonna do that in the moment. Now. Um, so I've got my front panel 
Uh, and what I want to do on my front and back panels here, uh, in my layer box, I want to um, create a new layer that is also called uh, front and back. But this is going to be uh, Alt 2. It's going to be just my alternate design because I want to be able to uh, um, put uh, this flourish into its own design and everything. So what I need to do now that I've created that new um, front, you know, alternate version because we're going to have two different types of designs that we can work with on this box. I need to take my vectors for my panels, these two rectangular vectors here, and I need to make a copy of them. And I need to copy them. If I right click and copy to layer, I can make a copy of them to that front and back, uh, you know, Alt to uh, layer. That way, now when I turn off my normal layer, I've got, you know, those panels are already, you know, the copy of those vectors are there. So now the only thing I need to pull from there is this vector. So I'm going to go ahead and move that because I don't need to copy it. I'm just going to move it to that new layer. And um, now when I shut this off, I've got my vectors and everything. And now I can move this up into position and size it down and scale it down and all of that stuff to you know make everything fit all pretty and i want to keep the aspect ratio because this is a scalable file or design um, where i can kind of panel it out uh, so i want to uh, scale it down to where it uh, you know looks nice but i also want to be able to i might not be able to get a full on you know version on this end so um, but I do want to be able to kind of uh, make a mirror copy of it and then I'll trim everything down that I need to trim um, so I, so it'll fit into these areas and stuff so if I take and mirror this take a mirror copy and uh, create a mirror copy and I don't want to flip it about the job center I just want to flip it horizontally to the right basically not flip horizontally but to the right it will uh you know panel out <sighs> excuse me i got something stuck in my throat yes wayne i sure can um uh wayne asked if i can uh, go over how to trace a bitmap i sure can um and let's uh let's take this and let's pull this down off the board for a moment and just focus on it for a minute because there's a little bit of work that needs to be done um, I like the uh, center design here uh, and everything but I want this to be one panel so I'm gonna be trimming away this joining line um, so that uh, it, it closes off these vectors and it creates this uh, you know full-on panel here and then I need to look at kind of uh, stretching it in a little bit and scaling it down to fit my rectangle um, now with this it's simply just the interactive trim tool the interactive trim tool here is the pair of scissors and I should since these are butt up together they're grouped together so it won't let me trim until I ungroup them so I gotta select both of those and I'm gonna ungroup them and now my interactive trim tool should let me to come in and I may have to click twice uh, to trim away a line but I'm clicking more than twice now and it's not trimming so let's uh, my scissors are stuck in the open position so let's see if I uh, confused my software <laughs> hold on a second okay my v-carve has froze up on me for a second um, there we go ta-da alright let's try that one more time my goodness alright so the interactive trim tool let's go in here and um, okay it really doesn't like that line or that design so bear with me a second um, it's uh, locking me up again so let's uh 
let's do this. Um, if I zoom in, I can see this is why it's not liking it because there's no, it's not, there's got to be some form of overlap. You know, it's got to overlap in order for it to trim that line out. So it wasn't quite overlapping. So let's go ahead and I'm going to undo the ungroup that I did uh, so it's all grouped back together. That way I can zoom in. And I'm just going to use hold the control key down on my keyboard and use the left arrow key to bump this over till I obtain either that on or overlap, you know, uh, of those two vectors. And now that I've created that overlap. I should now be able to ungroup them once again. Ungroup. And now with my interactive trim tool, I should have no issue with trimming away, you know, that intersecting line. So I need to kind of move down the path and uh, get rid of any overlapping line that, oh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to cut the way the other half of my design so let me undo <coughs> put that back <clears throat> all right and so right here this line meets so far at a point I'm going to use the node editing and I honestly really want I, I don't want any kind of line or little tail fin down here so on the uh, node editing I'm just going to cut the vector in these two spots in the corner right here and then uh, just join with a uh, you know a little smooth curve or something so let me get in here and Well, my V carve is uh, having a little bit of a headache today. I don't know why, but uh, let's um, there we go. Uh, for some reason, uh, just a simple click was not letting me get into uh, the node editing mode. Um, and uh, uh, now that I have established it, it's it's in there. So right here. I'm just going to cut these two vectors by right clicking on them, putting my mouse over the node, right click and cut vector. This way I can separate uh, those two, this little V point and right here, so it's kind of coming into this design as well. Um, I need to do a little bit of node editing on this end too. So I'm going to just cut the vector there. That's all I need to do. And now I can remove these two lines here. So just delete, click, and delete. Now up here, uh, with my interactive trim tool, I can zoom in and just trim off the overhang on both sides there. And that will close off that vector. But down here, let me zoom out. Um, down here, where I had uh, cut that line from, I need to join this vector with either a straight line or a smooth curve. Uh, let's see what a smooth curve looks like. Yeah, it looks a little bit more natural, so I'll go with a smooth curve on that. And those are in the Edit Objects menu under the um, Edit Object Tools last row. You can join or close a vector with a straight line with a smooth curve or by moving the two open endpoints to a common point, common midpoint. So now if I zoom back out and uh, if we kind of continue down and I look at the lines, so right in between here, uh, I need to do... Uh, some also you see that design there's actually a path it's still not overlapped right here so I won't be able to trim uh, to that but this is a classic uh, example for the bring two points to a common 
uh, midpoint. So that's how we'll close these off. So let's cut the vectors first. So in node editing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select my nodes here. And I'm going to cut the node on this left side, right click and cut the vector. Now notice when I right click, the shortcut code is the letter C on the keyboard. And the um, C on the keyboard, if I put my mouse over that node, let me get the nodes uh, pop back up here. Once again, a little bit of a finangle. So we'll go back into node editing mode. Thank you very much. All right. Um, <clears throat> if I put my mouse over that node and just simply hit the letter C on the keyboard, it will cut that vector at that point. Um, and so I want to come. I don't want to come so tight in here. So somewhere right about up in here I'm gonna put the mouse right on that vector line and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna cut the vector there and it will it should input a node right there and if I come in uh, right across from it and right click and cut the vector it should cut that there and so now I can delete these two joining lines and now I can close this vector up by bringing those two endpoints. If we can, I'll zoom in so you can see this. Uh, I'm going to use the join or close vectors by moving the endpoints to a common point of intersection. So when I do that, it will bring them over and uh, close them off. And I want to do the same thing for the other set. I'm going to select this and I'm going to join those by bringing them over to a common intersect. All right, so that will uh, take care of that. And now if I continue on uh, down through here, I should be able to use the interactive tool uh, to remove um, that line there. Give it a second. Evidently, Google says, wait a minute. Let me see what you're trying to do. <laughs> All right, let's zoom back in there. All right, so I should be able to trim that line away. Now if I move down, some of these lines, if they don't trim away, uh, you know, or if they're not over intersecting, um, you know, like if I zoom in real close, I can see that these two points are not intersecting. So the trim tool, if I trim this, the only thing that's gonna do is delete my design on that right side I don't want to do that so I have to close the trim tool and I need to do a bit of node editing again and I want to cut on um, these two points and I'm not sure I think it's because I'm not on my work board that uh, it's not you know I'm doing node editing and stuff off the work board so I think that's why my node editing tool is not really being my best friend right now but I don't want to have to do this on top of my panel so I'm just uh, doing it off the workpiece in the gray area, and that might be why my node tool has kind of uh, given me a little bit of a run for my money. All right, these are two individual lines here, um, and they kind of tie into each other and then to a really tight you know straight line so what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna come down to the other end which is at this point here and I'm gonna zoom in really tight and you see I do have an overlap there uh, which is good so I should now that I've cut the other end I should be able to use my interactive trim tool and uh, trim this side away And then I can delete, just delete that line. All right, so there we go. And so we're almost at the other end. Again, if I zoom in, I do have some intersection here. I don't think, I think I'm overlapping on this one. I am, I can see the cross of the line, so I can use my interactive trim tool here.
And then Wayne, I haven't forgot about you. We'll talk about tracing a bitmap in just a moment. All right. So now let's come down here and once again get rid of that line. And then on our last one, I should be able to just click on that and get rid of that double line. Okay. So basically, I've turned two panels into one. Uh, and now I can work with them, uh, you know, uh, as, as a whole panel. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to group it together. And of course, when you're trimming, you know, before you group together, it's always a good idea to definitely, you can always come over and check and make sure that there's no open vectors. Uh, and so you see there, it was a good idea. I did that because we have an open vector right here. And so when I trim this uh, on the node editing, I forgot to come in and close it. And so while that's open, I'm, or while it's selected, I'm just going to click uh, to move the two endpoints to a common point to close it off. And we're good to go. So now I should be able to uh, select all open vectors and there should be no open vectors in the design. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and I can group this together as one and I can treat it as one. I can scale it, I can, you know, uh, do whatever and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of stretch it out and everything to get it to, you know, fit how I want in my panel. Very nice, nice, nice. All right, so now that it's in that panel um, I want, or in that kind of that panel area, should I say, uh, I want to select on my uh, boundary, you know, where it needs to be, and I want to make sure that my design, I select it first, the boundary last, and I want to make sure it is centered to that last selection, that rectangle, so I want to center it up in there. So I should have a nice little uh, border all the way around and everything. And with that, I should be able to very easily go into the mirror tool. Um, and uh, because this is basically a mirror of each other, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I should be able to go into the mirror tool under uh, transform objects. And I should be able to flip it about the job center. And I should be able to flip it horizontally, creating that mirror copy. And it land where I need it to. So that second panel is finished. Okay. So, and I think I'm actually gonna like this design a lot better than the first one, but I like the idea of maybe doing a contrasting medallion in that circle and everything, so I think it's gonna look good. All right, so let's talk about tracing a bitmap just uh, you know quickly here uh, for the benefit of you guys that are just joining for the first time and, 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 and just learning this stuff. So, I'm gonna grab an image here uh, and bring it into the uh, design area, but I'm gonna move it off the design area and just kind of over here uh, and uh, kind of zoom into it. And I had a couple of different, you know, flourish patterns and things. Oh, this, wait, never mind. This is the one I didn't like last week. Uh, let's go and uh, let's jump on uh, Googling for a moment and let's find an image to, to bring in and trace real quick. So bear with me a second. All right, so imagine you're searching for, a, you know, an image or a graphic. Uh, Wayne, uh, you know, this is, you know, you had asked uh, for a demonstration on this. And so, so let's say that we were looking for, you know, some type of flourish and we found something we liked. Um, you know, we would come in and save that image to our computer. And then in our Vetric software, we would import that bitmap for tracing. And that's under the file operations, the last icon, import bitmap for tracing. And we would bring, uh, you know, click on that and open it up. And uh, I'm just going to drag it into, uh, uh, you know, off my work area. We'll take this one out. And... Um, with your magnifying, if you have version 9 up here, the magnifying glass with the pink line around it, just like this design has a pink line around it, 
means that I'm going to zoom in to that selected object. So if I click on that, it'll zoom into it, you know, kind of bring it full screen for us. And the uh, when you're tracing an image, that's the trace bitmap tool under the create vectors, the, the bird with his tail being traced. Uh, it's the first icon on the last row. And so if I open that trace bitmap tool, there are two ways of tracing a photo. One is color, one is black and white. I state this all the time, but it's uh, good to do it again. It doesn't matter if your photo is colored or black and white. The color trace um, and the uh, black and white trace simply means this. If I choose the color trace, the software is going to look at this image and it's going to lay out 16 of the maximum threshold of colors that it can find or shades of color, should I say. Uh, in the image and it's going to lay them out here in these nice little color swatches for me. And so I have a black and white image here so it's pretty easy. If I click on my trace color here is red. You can make your trace color anything that you want. You know blue, orange, what have you. I'll use red. And if I click on my black you can see that my image you know filled in primarily with that red trace color because that's what the image primarily is. But if I were to kind of uh, zoom in, you can see that there's other shades of colors here, uh, you know, on this design, especially when it comes to things like watermarks and, and stuff like that. So let's say that I wanted to fill in a little bit more of this design uh, and kind of capture a little bit, a few more of those pixels, then I'm just going to start kind of checking off those colors. And you'll see as I check off those colors, those areas start to fill up with the red trace color and everything. So the more I click, the more it's going to kind of fill in those areas with that red trace color and stuff. Now I don't want to go overboard. I don't want to go and grab too much uh, of the uh, of the lines because I could start picking up a bunch of noise if there's any noise in the image. Uh, so I'm going to stop right here. Uh, at that at that check and and uh, you you know if I were to go on uh, there this is a pretty clean image so you might not see any you know outrageous detail or, or specification but if I went too far of course then the whole thing would be selected uh, but I'm gonna back off a few shades and then when it draws the lines it's gonna draw the lines around that trace color that red trace color it's gonna create the vector lines around that color and that's how it traces the image and so when we have inside corners and outside corners you know sharp corners there's really none in this design uh, we can choose the type of corner fit that we do whether it's a loose or a tight corner fit you know now if you're too loose it's gonna be a sloppy tracing and uh, it won't uh, do well for us. If it's too tight, then you're going to get these rigid lines and not these nice smooth curves. So you want to kind of find that happy medium. And for me, uh, you know, default corner fit, 82 uh, percent, nine times out of ten, it it's it's perfect every time. I don't need to go any further. So I'm a default kind of guy when it comes to the trace bitmap. But you have this, you can experiment with it and see what different effects you get by using your slider bar and your corner fit. Your noise filter, the same thing. All these little pixels in this image have a value, a number value to them, and I, you know, don't ask me what it is, but um, anything 10 pixels or less is junk pretty much, so I can tell the software to ignore anything 10 pixels or less. And for me, I, I simply just use the default corner fit of two pixels, unless it starts picking up a lot of junk that I don't want then I will increase that up to, you know, around eight or 10, uh, you know, to, to ignore. But uh, I'm gonna leave it at the default. And so now I can just click preview and it will draw out those lines. Now let's see, just so you can see, you see this curve, this nice curve here um, on this, this line. Well, if I were to come in and make this a very tight corner fit and I draw that line again, Let's see if anything changes. Let's see if that curve still stays a curve, or let's see if um, it uh, gets a little bit more rigid. Yeah, you see that rule? Now it's all straight, rigid lines and everything. Not very smooth, you know? Uh, so you don't wanna be too tight uh, with that. 
So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to go back to the default corner fit and I'm going to go ahead and click preview and you'll see we get nice, you know, smooth curves. It's going to kind of ignore all those jagged pixels and just trying to trace out that image in the best way possible. And so now if I were to apply that, you know, if I was happy with it and apply it, I can close that tool. I'm finished with it. And now I need to go up to the layers box, either accessing it over here in our layers menu on the left or in our view bar at the top of the screen. Um, I can come in and turn that bitmap layer off that light bulb to hide that image. And now I have my vector graphic, uh, that tracing that I can scale to any size. Uh, down to the size of a stamp, you know, up to the side of a building, and it's going to maintain its resolution. And so that is the tracing of a bitmap. Okay. And that's actually a pretty neat looking design right there, but we're not going to use it in this project. So hopefully that helped explain it some. All right. Let's move back on to our jewelry box here so we can finish it up tonight. So I've got uh, this pattern here. Um, everything looks good. Now that for me, the front panels are done. So um, I'm not going to go through and draw all my parts out and then create the tool pass. I'm going to go ahead and create the tool pass as I go. So that way I can, you know, um, you know, have them over here so I can, when I move on to the back of the board, I don't have to keep flipping back and forth to create all the tool pass. So I want to select my outside boundary, my drawing area, my outside boundary, and the inside vectors here. And I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a V bit to do this. I'm gonna do a V carve and also a small eighth inch end mill. But I want nice little ramps on these designs, these floral patterns and everything, instead of being a straight pocket cut. So I'm gonna use the V carve tool path on this, and uh, I'm gonna cut to a depth, a very shallow depth actually, um, uh, eighth of an inch, 0.15. You know, just a very shallow cut. Um, and on this one, I am going to back it down to uh, 0.125, an eighth of an inch. I think it would look a little better. Uh, I'm going to be using a 60 degree V bit, and I'm going to be using an eighth inch end mill. Uh, now, this would probably be ideal in some areas for me to use my 16th inch end mill, but I just don't see the need for it. It's a pretty decent sized board or panel. And I believe the eighth inch end mill will get a major majority of these flat areas around these leaves and stuff and then my v-bit can clean up whatever it needs to clean up so i'm going to use the eighth inch end mill and i'm going to go ahead and name this here so i know that this is my um f and b f and um b i better not use the and sign i don't know how well file names like the and sign so i'll just go f uh and B front and back panel alternate alternate design. This is just letting me know that this is my alternate design. Um, and uh, you know, we'll leave it at that. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate this tool path. And uh, looks like I had it backwards, but let's take a look and see what it cut. I wanted, I think it cut the flowers rather than the other areas. So let's preview the visible tool pass. And I don't have my animation tool on. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want those parts to be cut out. I wanted the pockets. So I need to go back into that toolpath and I need to deselect, deselect this boundary here. Okay, that those two, the two outer boundaries, they don't need to be in there. Um, or alternatively, I need to create an offset of that boundary, either inward or outward. Um, if I want it, like if I want this nice frame area to be pocketed out all the way around here, this edge, then I, you know, I would, um, 
create an offset but I don't want that edge pocketed out. I want inside these areas around the leaves to be pocketed out. And if you see here, these lines are finished off. So we're gonna go ahead and just deselect those two boundaries and just recalculate that toolpath. Uh, Joe, my speed and feed on that toolpath is my V bits are always 35 inches a minute for the feed rate, 25 inches a minute for the plunge rate. It never changes on my v-bits from 1 to 180 degree bit 35 for the feed 25 for the plunge on my eighth inch end mill my feed rate is 50 inches a minute uh, uh, to 55 depending on I think uh, this one is set at uh, 50 inches a minute but my plunge is 20 inches a minute 20 inches a minute 50 and 20 all right so I'm gonna reset that back to a blank board and now I'm going to preview uh, the visible toolpath, meaning I can see the blue and red line. So I'm going to click the preview visible toolpath button. And this should give me the, uh, the look that I was trying to achieve. Yes, that's exactly the one that I want. So now I want to look at this. I'm going to be using a dark wood. And unfortunately, I have not set up the proper walnut board uh for my design see that does to me you know that doesn't look like walnut so if you guys want to embellish with me for a minute i'll show you how to do that so let's let me i want to put a proper walnut board i'd like to get a true visual of what you know i'm carving in so i'm going to go into um google real quick and i'm going to type in walnut wood background in my Google and I'm gonna click on images and I'm gonna find a you know a piece of walnut that represents what I want well since my I don't want I want the grain running along the x-axis just like it would be for my board so I want to find a you know a a graphic that uh, is gonna be you know a good representation of what my uh, project board would look like and this you know this is a pretty decent looking uh, you know um, walnut grain there uh, walnut board and stuff and so I kinda like this one a little bit better so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna save that image okay I'm gonna save that image and I'm just gonna throw it right now into the jewelry box uh, folder for the moment because it's gonna get moved. So I'm just gonna save it in there. And now in my Vetric software, if I go up to File, Open Application Data Folder, I can go into my Bitmap Textures folder into my wood folder and I can right click oh I gotta first I gotta move it I gotta I forgot I was gonna paste it <laughs> I ain't not to paste yet I gotta go to my jewelry box folder I need to I'm gonna cut this from here I don't want it in the jewelry box folder so I'm gonna right click and cut from there and then I'm going to um, come into my application data folder and paste and so that is called Walnut 2. So that's the name it'll have in my Vetric software. So I can go ahead and uh, now I can close that folder. I do need to uh, save my changes in the design here because I do need to refresh the software. And so let this save this file. Almost there. And now I'm going to exit completely out of my VCarve 9 software. And we're going to go back into VCarve 9. And I'm going to open that job back up. <clears throat> now I can come back over to the tool pass. I'm going to go to my 3D view here and I can open up my preview of my toolpath and I can change to that walnut too um, for my, you know, my board. And now I can preview 
those two tool paths to get a really good representation of what my project's going to look like. Preview the visible tool paths. There we go. All right, so um, I think it's going to be a uh, nice looking design. Uh, and, you know, this one definitely, I kind of, I really like this one a lot, uh, you know, for, for the size of a jewelry box. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that uh, uh, with that dark wood. It is kind of dark, but uh, that's, you know, um, but hopefully you can kind of uh, see that pattern and everything. Uh, that's going to that's going to look very very you know very sharp uh, on the on that project. All right. So uh, and if again if we change to uh, you know a lighter wood so you can actually see a little bit clearer you know detail, uh, we'll change this over to a cherry just so you can kind of see some of the the detail. But you know that's going to look really really nice. Now, if you notice in the tool pass, just so you know, you see all these little round dots and everything. That's where my 8th inch end mill can fit. Uh, you know, and it's carving away everywhere the 8th inch end mill can fit and then the V bit has to come and clean up the rest. Uh, and so you're seeing all the tool marks from where the V bit is going to come out and flatten out those pockets. Now, if I really wanted to, you know, since I'm only cutting this an eighth inch deep and everything, and it's not that big of a panel, I could run this with a sixteenth inch uh, end mill. Uh, I do have a sixteenth inch end mill that I bought from, uh, you know, Amana, and so if I came in and uh, selected that sixteenth inch end mill, and I run that at forty and twenty. Uh, you know 40 inches a minute and 20 inches a minute but if I were to calculate that um, it's gonna take just a second to process but if I were to calculate that you'll see how the 16th inch end mill will clean things up um, quite well because it's a smaller bit it can get in there and you know around those detail areas so uh, it's almost done processing a couple more passes I think one or two more maybe three there we go oh still a little bit more thinking <laughs> let it process I've got mine set up on um, uh, seven times slower for the preview and everything so if I were to set my standard uh, preview my, my, my preview to standard it would make calculating that toolpath much quicker much faster but now you see all that blue fill area now that's that that's where my 16th inch bit can get in there and clean up so if we were to preview you know that visible tool path um, you know and let it uh, let it uh, clut out and clean up the eighth in, or the 16th inch end mill is going to clean up quite a lot better than the eighth inch end mill and everything um, and so, oops, I went back to the walnut. Let's go back to our cherry. I'm going to end up deleting that walnut board. I don't like though. That's like some kind of bird's eye maple to me. But uh, you can see how much better uh, that 16th inch end mill was to get into those uh, details and everything. And so that's actually going to look really, really nice. Now, while I'm here, uh, in this front panel and everything, I am going to go and I'm going to shut off that alternate version and turn my original front panels on. And now for this, I want this raised, so I do need to make sure that I select and make sure you're working in the active layer, your active layer and everything. Uh, but I do need to select this outside boundary. We didn't need to on the other design, but I do need to on this design uh, to when I do the V-carved toolpath. And I think that was this toolpath here. It might have been, yeah, the V-carved toolpath. Um, I'm going to, again, set this to a 0.125. I think, you know, it doesn't need to go that deep. And let me add uh, these two into the mix. And uh, this is going to be my F and B uh v1 version one you know uh panel 
I'll just leave it at that. And I'm gonna calculate that out. And so now my tool pass for my front side of my panels are done. I can move on to the side in the back. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna move on uh, and get past this. Because I'm dragging it out. So let this calculate out. And then I'll be able to move on into in the software. <clears throat> this design is a really nice design and all, but um, I actually, I think I'm gonna like the other one better. And when I carve it, I'm actually gonna carve alternate to uh, version two. Uh, unless again, I come up with a nice looking medallion. Um, we might not have enough time to draw the medallion, but what I might do is create a, or create a medallion, of you know, kind of some type of design. But I will, uh, you know, maybe in our next class, we'll, we'll focus on just how to create a medallion type thing or something like that, uh, a rosette, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to uh, preview the visible. I'm going to reset the preview back to a blank board and um, go into a Walnut 2 here. And I'm going to preview the visible tool pass. That is a dark walnut. I probably should have found something a little lighter, but that's how I like my, my walnut's really a chocolate, dark, deep color and everything. Uh, so, all right, let's turn the uh, color off and just stick with the material color. All right, so if we zoom in, and I'll change it to cherry so you guys can see it a little bit better. Uh, but I just like to, I just wanted to show you how to bring a picture in to, for your graphic. But let's go to cherry so you can see the detail better and all. Uh, this in itself is going to be a neat looking design. Like I said, I just got to got to do something with the middle. I, the, those open voids. You might like that. That might be something unique. You might like the way that panel looks with those open voids. But for me, it's just screaming for something to go in there <laughs> whether it be my you know daughter's initials if i was making this joy box for her or something and screaming like put something in the middle there that's just too much open white space all right so my front panel front side or top side of my front panels are done uh so i can move on from them the tool paths are created they're good to go so now i can focus on the back side of them so i'm going to flip uh, I'm going to turn off this layer and turn off my back rabbit vectors. Turn on my back rabbit vectors. And I'm going to flip this board over so I can have my, my vectors here. And remember I said that uh, on these uh, vectors here, we've got our uh, side rabbits uh, and our bottom rabbit here. That's this rectangle and everything and the two tool paths were created for for those vectors if i'm not mistaken yes and yes um all these rabbits were cut in three quarter inches and we covered this in the first video they were cut to three quarter i'm sorry uh three eighths not three quarter three eighths of an inch uh in depth of cut uh but there's one more set remember i said that uh you know i wanted to um make a little mortise slot or notch on the front of my panel here for the hinges well one of these is going to be the back panel you know and so uh, it doesn't matter which one because they're both the same so i'm just gonna kind of work over here and uh because i want uh, I, you know when it's just flipped over this is where i want the mortise to be cut from because i'm not cutting all the way through the three quarters of an inch uh and because it's going to be a hidden mortise you know you know the hinge i don't want to cut all the way through so i'm going to go into the drawing tools let's switch back over out of the tool pass for a minute to the drawing tools i'm going to go into the rectangle tool and the hinges that i'm using are uh small brass hinges uh um, you can pick hinges up at lowe's home depot rockler what have you uh these inch these hinges uh that i'm going to be using are about an inch in length um, and, uh, you know, they have smaller ones and stuff, but they're about an inch in length. So I want to create a rectangle that is at least one inch. And, um, the height, I very small amount of height, but I need enough height for my router bit to be able to fit into in order for it to, uh, to, to do what I want it to do. So it needs to be at least a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna go 0.3, and I'm going to uh, come over here and, um, oops, I don't know why I clicked when I should have just uh, 
Let's try that again. One, and then point .3. There we go. And now I can come in and place where I want those hinges. Now, if I turn my front and back vectors back on, you can see the panel and you can see the uh, this, this far outside green line here. Um, let's see if I can zoom into that. This is the end of my panel, okay? So if I want to my hinges to be one inch in on each end, if I want them to be, you know, a couple of inches in, uh, you know, you can turn that visibility on. You can't click or change anything on those vectors, but it could help with laying out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag from my ruler, I'm going to drag a guideline to my, and I'm going to zoom into it. I'm going to drag it to the end of my panel. Okay. And if I right click on that guideline, I can tell it to relatively move its position or, or create another one. Uh, and I want to be about, I want to be about an inch and a half over from the edge. So I want to move in the positive direction 1.5 inches and I'm going to click on create new guide. Okay. All right, I can close that. And now if I take this and click back on this and right click on it, I can say create a relative guide 12 inches away because that's where the other end of my, uh, you know, that panel is because it's a 12 inch panel. So I'm gonna click create guide and then I'm gonna close that and that should have created a guide on the other end here for me. And now I can right click on this guide and say move relative. Now I'm moving to the left in the negative direction, 1.5 inches. Create new guide. Okay. And what I want is this guide, this whole purpose, the sole purpose of this guide for me is just a place uh, that I want the edge of my mortise to snap to. So I grab when you're in transform mode by double clicking on an object it throws it into transform mode. You can also access that by clicking the transform mode button under edit objects. But if I put my mouse right on the line of that vector and I hold down I can drag and snap that line to something you know. And so what I did was grab this edge here and now I can snap that edge to my guideline. And now I need, uh, you know, to determine how deep I want to cut it. And so um, while that one snapped there, I snapped it to the top of the board, right? We haven't, we haven't created, you know, carved anything yet. I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this. I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm going to just grab this edge this 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 the line not the not the white dots but this edge you can see I'm, it shows me when I'm at the center of that line and I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and I'm gonna hold down my control and alternate key and you see here no matter where I move my mouse you know it stays in that aligned position so I'm just gonna drag right over while holding my uh, alternate key and then I'm gonna come over here and um, grab this again. I'm not going to hold the control key down now, just my alternate key, uh, so I can drag this and snap to that edge. Okay, a little bit of a shortcut keyboard for you. Keyboard shortcut. Now, my mortise, the little hinge mortise, only needs to be cut into the top of this panel. Uh, oh gosh, so, so thin. Um, 16th of an inch. You know, let me let me let me look at my um, Yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go either a sixteen of an inch or uh, you know three thirty seconds. Uh, one of the two, but uh, not not a very deep mortise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of these vectors and I'm going to move, open the move tool under the transform objects and I'm going to 
move them relative to their position along the y-axis up and down and I'm going down which is a negative direction on the y-axis down is negative so I want to move negative 0 0.0625 and I want this edge um, which it should be the edge that's closest to me to be 0 0.0625 0 and uh, just bump that in that sixteenth of an inch that's all I need for that, you know, that cut. All right. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and create the uh, pocket cuts for this. Now, keep in mind what I said earlier. I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill. So let me uh, draw a quarter inch end mill. And the... Let me grab this edge. When that end mill cuts and everything, it's going to leave right here this little piece of wood, that white area right there. It's going to leave that little swoop up. And I'm going to have to take a chisel and come back and chisel out that, you know, that corner edge to square it up and everything, uh, which is fine. The end mill is just going to be removing most of the, uh, most of the, um, uh, the material for me so I don't have to sit there and try to hand route it or just use a chisel you know uh, you know because my chisels I'm terrible about keeping them sharp <laughs> which is it's sad to say but uh, yeah unfortunately my power tools get more attention than my hand tools and stuff so I'm very bad about keeping my chisel sharp and so I don't want to you know I want to let my CNC kind of clean this up all right so I, I, but I will have a little bit of squaring off to do with the chisel to kind of chip out that, you know, little area there, which is not a problem. All right. So now that I have those, I want to go ahead and just create the pocket tool path for them. And I've already created the pocket tool path for the other items. Uh, so I'll just, uh, you know, I could, I could add and just do all of those tool paths at one time, but I don't want this cutting as deep or as shallow as the other. My hinge... Um, my depth of cut here needs to go uh, half of an inch. My hinge um, is uh, a half of an inch wide, that one, the one side. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I don't know why I went into that tool. I'm going to go ahead into my pocket tool and I'm going to go a 0.5 deep. Um, I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill going to take an eighth of an inch pass at a time. Uh, I'm only cutting a sixteenth. I'm only skimming a sixteenth out of here. Um, so I can actually edit those passes and uh, it's going to plunge down, run across. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, I can take that sixteenth of an inch in one full because it's on the side of the bit. So I'm going to do this in one pass. Okay, and so this is going to be my hinge, hinge, mortise, and uh, I'll just go ahead and put in there a 0.25 em, and click calculate. And so now, if we preview uh, all of the these pockets and rabbit tool paths, let's preview. Um, these three tool paths here, preview visible tool paths. You'll see the effect that we're going for. Uh, yeah, Tim, Tim's got it. Tim, Tim says I, sh I really should put skulls in between those pineapples and flowers and everything. All right. So now if we, if we spin this around, Ooh, did that make you dizzy? If we spin this around and zoom in, okay, you'll see the hinge mortise uh, let's see if I can, am I on cherry still? Let's go to maple, uh, for preview purposes. All right. You can see those hinge mortises, uh, that, you know, get cut in there. Uh, nice flat square bottom. Cause of course the bit was coming down, right? And so I get a nice, you know, flat bottom and everything that was coming down when it was coming three and four. Uh, but I do have to square off the two sides and everything, but the back is all done. You know, it's, it's, it's straight. 
So I've got those, uh, you know, hinge mortises in there in that back panel. So my front and panel and back panels are done except for one major thing uh, or two major things. One is the alignment pins for flipping this and two, the profile cuts, the final profile cuts and everything. Um, so let's go in uh, and now that I've got my more, uh, mortises and everything done, let's go ahead and flip back to the front because the the uh, alignment pins holes have to be you know on the front side because I want my machine to drill them first before it does any carving and everything. Um, and I want to come back in and shut off my vectors and all. So on my board, uh, this white area is my work area, and I've got so I've got some waste area here. The blue line uh, now it's pink that I've selected on it, but this is my panel. Okay, this is my profile cut right here. Uh, here and let me move these guides. I'm going to go up to view guides, and I'm just going to hide the guides by unclicking them because I might want to use them again. But uh, so these are my two profile cuts here. But I want to do if I'm uh, I have a choice. Do I flip the back over, do all the mortises and rabbits first, and then flip it over and cut the front side and the profile cut last? Do I do the 3D cuts, or the, not 3D, but the V carving and all that first, and then flip it over and do all the mortises and tenons? Or not, or um, I keep saying tenons. I always want to put tenons with mortises. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, uh, which, which side am I cutting first, you know? And um, that's going to be determined. And for me, I... I tend to cut the uh, top first, you know. You might cut the back side first. And when you're doing a 3D model or something, you de and you're flipping this thing over or whatever, you may definitely want to cut the back side first if there's, you know, a reason to or what have you. But for me, I'm going to cut I'm going to do my carving from here uh, with this side up first. And um let's uh because I've, I've got all this wood supporting everything and I'm going to be having rabbits and everything cut and I don't want to flip this thing over and it be balancing on those rabbits and stuff. Anyway, um, <clears throat> all right, so first thing, let's go back over and let's create our alignment pinholes. Now, I'm going to be uh, using a uh, stainless steel uh, quarter inch dowel uh, for my alignment pin. Um, quarter quarter inch in diameter and it's probably about an inch in length uh, but you can use your wood dowels you can use whatever the case may be but uh, I'm gonna go 0.25 for the diameter of that circle and um, I want to you know wherever I place uh, this pin key thing for me uh, one is when I'm cutting my profile cut when I'm cutting my profile cut, um, I don't want the, especially since it's a kind of a stainless steel, um, I don't want my router bit hitting it when it's doing the profile cut, and I don't want the, um, yeah, I don't want uh, uh, to be anywhere near my, 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 my profile boundary. So I don't have that much room uh, on the end of this board. I mean, imagine if this was my quarter inch end mill, you know, and it was cutting up against, you know, my profile cut and everything. That doesn't leave me much room uh, to put that in there. So the uh, choices that I have, I've got a lot of space in between here. Um, I can, uh, you know, I've got way more than a quarter of an inch. I can bring my panels and vectors and everything inward uh, a little bit off of the edges. I can bring them closer together uh, to uh, give me some room on the ends of my boards because uh, I want two alignment pins on its center. Um, or or um, I could uh, make my pins out of wood. Uh, I could make them short and everything, so even if they did get cut into a little bit, they wouldn't hurt anything, uh, kind of thing, uh, either or. But for me, my choice is going to be, I'm going to be moving my panels. When I move my panels, that means I'm going to have to move my 
rabbits and everything as well. And if we look um, ever so gracefully, okay, by moving this panel, I'm not messing with my mortises, none of that stuff and everything. So I'm just going to shift this over and an approximate measurement so that I know relative on the y or x axis, sorry, it's going positive. And I'm going to shift that over a half an inch. Okay, and the before I forget, I'm going to flip to the back side of my board, and I'm going to select these three vectors here as well, and I'm going to move relative to their position half an inch. Okay, I want to make sure I shift everything together. So now everything, that's all I needed to do with that, and it's fine. All right, so now the, and the area between where that overlap on some of those uh, vectors, mortars and all, that's all waste area anyway, so I'm not worried about that. Um, so now I can come in and I want to take... Now that I've shifted this, I want to take and select all of these vectors, excluding that little dot right there. I'm going to just kind of, uh, let's, uh, let's move him out right now. I'm going to select all of these vectors, everything, and I'm going to center them up on my panel. Okay. And then I'm going to flip over to the back side of the board. I'm going to select all of my vectors here. And I'm not going to center up and down. They're going to stay the same. So I'm just going to hit the left to right center and center them up. Okay. All right. So now everything is in alignment still and all that wonderful stuff. All right. So now I can go in and I can bring my alignment pin over where I want it. Uh, I want to put it uh, just barely off into the edge here and I definitely need to put up my alignment tool and I need to make sure it's centered from left to right, you know, or top to bottom, should I say, uh, centered. So I need that centered on the material. I don't want to be half cocked or anything like that. I need to be centered. And then with that, I'm going to mirror that to the other side, creating a mirror copy. I'm going to flip it horizontal and create that on the other side. And now I have, uh, when I flip my board center on center, it's going to be, you know, there. Now, flipping the board the direction, um, you're flipping in one direction or the other. The uh, key thing is, you know, sometimes people put a third alignment pin hole there. So they, you know, that tells them they can only flip in one direction, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to just use these two here knowing that I'm, you know, flipping from my machine's right side to the left side on the Y axis. Um, and uh, there's, uh, when it comes to the concept of double-sided work, uh, there's a great little uh, demonstration or explanation video on that. Uh, in the Vetric uh, tutorials, it kind of just covers, you know, some of the alignment pins and things like that. All right, so with that done, I'm going to select both of those vectors. And I want to do a, uh, you would think, a drilling operation. Um, but a drilling, yeah, a drilling operation, this is a quarter inch end mill. Uh, and I'm using a quarter inch dowel and all that. If I was using a three eighths inch dowel, then I would use a pocket cut with my quarter inch end mill. Uh, but uh, since I'm using the same size diameter bit as my holes, then um, I will come in and um, use a drilling tool path. And for this, I want to go all the way through my three quarter inch material and about a quarter of an inch at least, quarter, maybe three eighths inch in uh, to my waste board. So I want to go uh, 0.75, oops, too many decimal points plus 0.25 and um, equal sign and you know one inch you know uh, now 
we know three quarters plus a quarter is one inch, uh, but if you didn't, you could do the math just like I did there. Also, another thing is, is the thickness of your material. Um, that is uh, referenced by the letter, um, oops, 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 cancel, uh, cancel. That is referenced by the letter T. Come on now. And, you know, I could, I could say T plus 0.25 equals and get that one inch as well. Because it's, it's basically the T is the thickness of my material plus that quarter inch I need to go into my waste material. So, you know, it gives me the same, you know, if I wanted to go T plus uh, 0.375, you know, that's an inch and an eighth. That kind of deal. All right, so, um, but I only need to go about a quarter of an inch into my material. So, um, all right, so one inch. All right, I'm gonna use uh, pecking. I don't wanna take, I don't want it just boring down there because without pecking it does, it bores straight down to that, you know, one inch depth. Uh, I wanna use pecking. I want it to peck up and down to clean it out because the walnut is a little bit, uh, you know, dense. Uh, so I want to retract uh, to the height above the previous pass. I don't need to pull it all the way out of the board. Um, <clears throat> I don't need to pull it all the way out. I just want to retract past the height of the last pass about 0.2 of an inch. Um, uh, point, not point 0.2. That should be point. Um, <laughs> I just want it to pull up a little bit. Um, that might be a little small. Let's go uh, retract about an eighth of an inch. I want it to retract just a little bit from its previous cut uh, so that it pulls those chips out of the way and everything as it's drilling down. Um, I don't want to dwell. I don't need to dwell at the end of the last pass. You know, I don't need to sit there and let it spin, you know, there. And so this is going to be my alignment pins. And this is a 0.25 end mill. Let's get rid of that space. Now I'm cutting all the way through. I'm going to click OK. All right. So if we uh, bring our board back into full on view here and we preview that tool path. So we've got our alignment pins um, there. And uh, I've probably got enough room to move them in a little bit but they don't need to be at the very they don't need to, that's fine that they're at the end like that they're not going to blow out on me all right now my profile cuts um i'm going to be cutting i'm going to be cutting this first i'm going to be flipping over and doing the profiles uh last and all so i need to move my vectors not move but just copy my vectors these two boundaries for my profile cut i need to copy them to the other side Okay, that way when I switch over to the other side, those vectors are there, those profile cuts. And you can probably see them in the blue because they're on layer one, so they're blue. Uh, let me, um, for your visual perfectionness, uh, let's find a color that you can actually see. Okay, so there's my, you know, kind of my boundary lines. All right, so let's create that profile cut and let's let's wrap it up on this and get our side panels done. Um, and we got to work on a lid. So we've got that. We're going to go into the profile tool path. We're going to go uh, again with this. If I wanted to, I could type T equals, you know, the thickness of my material or just type in 0.75. Um, you can go a little bit more, 0.76, if you you know think you're not going to cut all the way through your material, um, whatever the case may be. But I'm going to go 0.75, and I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill. Now you could also, if you ever wanted to, you know, you could do a profile pass halfway through or almost halfway through on one side, then on the other, you know, when you flip it over, you could always do that as well. 
you know, uh, especially if you didn't want to put a waste board on your table, but you need to do a profile cut, you can cut one half, flip it over, cut the other half. Just make sure you don't go all the way through. All right, I want to be on the outside of the line with that quarter inch end mill, and I am going to do a spiral ramp. Um, and since I'm going to be using a spiral ramp, I want to make sure that my feed rate and my plunge rate match each other. I want it plunging at the same rate that it's feeding for that spiral ramp. This would be the only purpose or only reason for having your feed rate and your plunge rate the same value. So in my edit tools, so it did not, I did not hit select, I hit edit. So it just edits this toolpath for this toolpath only. And it doesn't change the defaults of my tool in my tool database. But I want to make sure that those are running together. So we're going to click OK on that. And I want to, uh, on this, we've got to think about clamping, uh, you know, how we're going to clamp. Uh, you know, we know we have our alignment pins and we got room here for the clamping. But when this gets cut out, uh, how are we holding our material um, for uh, it moving? So I do want a couple of tabs uh, on this. And so on those uh, tabs, I'm gonna go edit tabs. They only need to be about a quarter inch uh, wide, but I'm gonna go on this three quarter inch board, I'm gonna go about an eighth of an inch on the thickness. And I'm gonna put a tab on the ends, uh, one here, one here. I'm gonna put one here and then right straight across from it on the other one, I'm going to put one there. Uh, or I could do two and two. It doesn't matter. You know, we just want them right across from each other to reinforce that area. And so I'll drag these up and I'll just do four on each one. So, But we want them right across from each other so they reinforce that area when that wood gets cut out, you know, and milled out all that waste wood in there that it's reinforced in here. Um, and then on the end, on this end, again, we're going to go one and two. We're going to go ahead and this is going to be our final profile. And it's a 0.25 end mill. Calculate. All right, let's cut this board out and uh, see what our panels look like. <clears throat> okay, so you see here uh, why you put those pins uh, in between each other is there's very little material being left when that you know profile cuts and so having those pins um you know aligned from each other that reinforces that area right there and uh you know makes it pretty pretty stable uh you know uh in everything so that's why you want to reinforce and that's why you want to align them up with one another now let's take a second i've been talking doing a lot of talking and everything and let's see if um uh, we've got any comments in the uh, Facebook group. I haven't even looked uh, uh, at any of the comments, so bear with me a second. And no, it doesn't look to be, but let's uh, refresh. I might be out of date there. Okay, so it looks like everybody that's joining us is actually joining us in YouTube. Um, any questions up to this point? Uh, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, remove, I'm going to remove um, the tabs and do my profile cut because I'm looking here at this um, material that's left on the end of my rabbit and because my bit is traveling through here and everything so I'm trying to figure out what that material is and what that material is is remember I moved all of the vectors and I did not recalculate the tool pass. So let's go ahead and I'm going to recalculate. That's this calculator right here. I'm going to go through and recalculate all the tool pass. See there? I thought you guys were going to, you know, remind me of that one. So we're going to recalculate all those tool pass. It'll take just a second to process. And while they're recalculating, if you guys uh, have any questions, let me know. Bum, 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 bum. 
I want to show you uh, for the for the top lid. I'm going to do um, you know we could do that floral type design and everything, but I want to create a uh, very simple uh, cross hatch kind of uh, uh, peg pattern, diamond pattern, whatever with a uh, name in there. Um, I'm actually thinking that you know. Um, or it might have that floral pattern with a name uh, that I that, that second one I chose. I'm not sure yet. Might have a bunch of skulls on it, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to show you a quick and easy way to make cross hatch patterns, uh, which you probably are, you know, many of you probably already know. But uh, I want to show you a quick path. So this is calculating. I won't be able to. to uh, it's almost done um, with all of the tool pass, but I won't be able to um, move the Vetric software until. It is done. Here we come. It's racing along now. It's doing the uh, decorative panel. And uh, do you have time to show how to add a tool? Yes, Jerry, I do. I do. I surely, surely do. While that's calculating, let's. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a um, just a, my Aspire here. It's the same thing in Aspire Desktop or Pro. Uh, so um, it, uh, you know, the process of adding a tool is the same in all three of the uh, tool paths. By the way, that man cave wrench that you guys were sharing with each other, very cool design, uh, very awesome. Uh, I have pulled it into and looked at it on my computer. Um, neato stuff, whoever created that. Very cool. All right, so let's go with just a... All right, when you're adding a tool um, to your tool database, your tool database is these three tools, this little icon over here. Um, when you're simply adding just a new tool, whether it be a V-bit, ball nose, tapered ball nose, diamond drag, engraving bit, and everything, you don't have to draw the profile of that bit. So you could just simply click on the word new. And from the drop down menu on the right hand side, you can drop it down and you can choose ball nose, end mill, radius end mill, V-bit, engraving bit, tapered ball nose, drill, laser cutter, uh, plasma cutter, diamond drag, form is the only one that we have to draw the shape with. So any of these. So if I were to click on a you know a ball nose end mill, then I would put in the diameter of you know my tip of my bit. Uh, let's say that this was a quarter inch uh, ball nose. My pass depth is typically the 50% uh, the diameter of the bit. So let's say a 0.125. Oops, let's put that in there. Um, ah. Pass depth will be a 0.125. Uh, my ball nose is step up either step over either eight or ten percent, um, either one. And then for this quarter inch, I can run about 65 inches a minute with a plunge of 15. Click apply, and that's added in there. I can come in and give this a special name, uh, class demo bit. Uh, that way, I know what one to remove later, and I can click apply, and that will be you know in that list. Now. If I'm adding a, an actual radius router bit or something with a special profile and things, then I need to create or draw that profile. And I always start out with a rectangle. Um, so let's assume that we were using the uh, white, uh, white side uh, 1736 bowl bit. 1736 bowl bit. So that bit has an overall width of the bit of an inch and a quarter. So for the width of my rectangle, I'm gonna type in 1.25. It has an overall height of a half of an inch. So point 0.1, uh, it's gonna be one inch, one inch. You double it up. And then it has a radius on the corners of a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to type in radius 0.25 and I'm going to draw that out. And now I can come in and I need the right side, the right bottom right corner of that bit profile. 
So if I go into node editing mode on the center of this line, I can cut the vector here. I can cut the vector here. And I can cut the vector here. And I could have cut it twice as well, but uh, I need this part. So all of this, this can get deleted and this can get deleted. I need this right side of this profile. So whatever bit, draw your profile out and it has to be to scale. Draw your profile, whether it's an OG bit, a round over, a, you know, a, a, a ball nose, whatever the case may be, you draw out that right side profile. Another quick example, just to show you kind of a round over. Um, the white side 2051, uh, 2050, uh, eighth inch round over, uh, that has an overall width, um, of, uh, 0.375 and, uh, the height is one quarter. So we'll go 0.25, click apply and, um, it has an internal radius because it's a round over of an eighth of an inch, 0.125. There we go. And the node editing on this, I'm gonna cut here. Well, let's, well not there, let's, let's go over here because we only need the right half. So in node editing, we're gonna, one more time, node editing. Uh, I'm gonna just cut it right here in the middle, cut vector, and then on this side, cut vector. Where is it at? Okay, right there. And uh, now I can delete all the rest of this. Now, on that white side bit, there is a 1 16th inch upright here. So if I come in to uh, 0 0.06, <clears throat> and you can see the length of the line here on the numbers. If I zoom in even more, I can, you know, narrow it down. Oops. Let's undo. 0 0.062, 5, right there. All right, finish that line off. Okay. And then down here, uh, there's a little bit of a 1 8 inch leg. Uh, that comes down further. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go 0.125 and then space bar. Now I can take my uh, scissor tool and trim that little line away. Um, now I need the bottom half uh, real quick. I could have moved that line down. Yeah, let me let me let me show you that. That would be a little bit easier way. Uh, so if I go into node editing mode on this and cut that, I don't know why my node editing is messing up on me today. Uh, if I cut that vector right there, I can move that line down relative on the Y position negative uh, point one, two, five, click apply. And then I can select both of those vectors and join with a straight line. Okay, so that draws that in. And now I have to click all three of these and join. I've got two open vectors. If I click the join button, I have one. I've got that. So either way you draw your profile, it has to be to scale. Now once it's drawn, you know, once that profile is drawn, you have to select it before you open the tool database. And then now I can go new. And the minute I click form tool, it will draw out the rest of that bit and it will put in my diameter and it'll put in some pass depths and parameters and everything for me. Now, uh, I want my parameter here. Uh, my step over is going to be the step over is going to be an eighth of an inch. The pass depth is going to be a quarter of an inch. And for this round over, because from the end point to the bottom to the end point to the top right here, you know, of the round over, it's a quarter of an inch tall. And that's what I want my pass depth to be because I want to do a round over in a single pass. And so I would probably run this around uh, 55 and 20 on the plunge. Click apply. You know, I could give it a name. You know, uh, I'll just do this class round over and uh, hit apply to lock that in and then you know save that and if I needed to do the bowl bit same thing I click on that open the tool database 
new, come over here, form tool. It draws in that bowl bit, puts in the diameter and everything. And uh, you know, my pass depth uh, percentage, I'll step over, I'll create the percentage, probably about 33.3% .3 of that bit. And on this one, I can run, um, I'm gonna run it around, around 50. Uh, but now if you have now if you have a router your spindle speed by the way your spindle speed is just whatever number you want to throw in there but if you have a spindle you want to appropriately you know choose this and for this uh, the this big inch and a quarter diameter bit I want to I want to definitely do not want to be running um, you know an inch you know uh, I mean 24,000 rpms I want to slow it down uh, so I would probably run uh, the ball no or that bowl bit around um, uh, 18,000 RPMs, uh, somewhere around there. The wider, the, the bigger the diameter, the slower the RPMs. And so if you have a spindle, you have to put your RPMs in your spindle speed. But if you have the Hitachi, Bosch, or Porter Cable router, you can just plug in any number. And I usually use 12,000 as a, just a generic default number, uh, whatever you want. But if you have a spindle, you need to pro program in that, that spindle speed and stuff. And so that's how you add a router bit to the tool database all right so let's go back to our um, vcard pro and uh, let's reset our preview okay let's reset let's go into our preview and let's reset it and let's uh, take a look at um, everything preview all sides I'll let it run all the tool paths all at one time um, oh I shouldn't have done that let me stop that hit that red X to stop things okay I don't want to preview all sides because I have two different alternate versions on the one side that would be ridiculous for me to do um, so all right so we'll stop that there and let's reset our preview and let's preview you know what I mean that wouldn't be that wouldn't look good all right let's preview the visible tool pass on this side so hopefully Jerry hopefully that answers your question on changing or adding a bit to your tool database uh, all the other bits you just program in the parameters and all but a form tool like a round over OG bit uh, whatever the case may be uh, you need to um, draw out the profile and it has to be drawn to scale okay so we're gonna flip over to the other side here and we're going to preview visible tool pass <clears throat> All right, now it's 8:54. I don't want to run too much past nine, so let's get the let's get the uh, tool pass created for the two side pieces. Uh, and by the way, you know your two side pieces, other than the 3D models, you know you can always take these over. You don't have to do your profile cuts here. You can take that board over to your table saw or your chop saw, and you know just cut off the square because the the board the project is the same size as the board. You know, but we just have two cuts to have to make to cut it down to their final lengths. So if we look at this, um, here's my two uh, panels. I've got my rabbits uh, for the side pieces to go into. I've got my rabbit for the bottom panel to go into. If I flip this over and turn it, you can see the hinge mortises, uh, you know, for on that back panel, which is awesome. And then if I come over here, we can see the, uh, you know, the front panels of uh, the jewelry box. Now, let's go over and... Um, Go back over to our 2D view and go back over to our design area here. And let's uh, switch things to our, get rid of, we're done with the front and back panels. Let's talk about our side panels here. And I do want to open up the alternate two because I want to make a copy 
of uh, copy to layer. I want to copy to the side panels of that panel there. And I wish I would have kept the original that was already split in half and everything because um, that would have been a perfect size for my side panels. Um, bummer dude on that one. Okay, so let's turn those off and let's take this move it here yeah it is a bummer dude so hold on a second we're gonna take two quick detour we're gonna um, uh, retrace this yeah let's delete that one import bitmap for tracing uh, grab this leaf pattern anywhere it doesn't matter move it over here zoom into it and uh, trace bitmap tool and I'm gonna use the uh, black and white trace or the color trace sorry so I could just check off these colors and everything all right preview apply close I'm gonna shut off the layer for the bitmap layer and so now I have that uh, single panel graphic right there um, and uh, I can move my double panel out of the way now I'm not gonna use it but this is my alternate panel for the uh, single and so I will create the one for both of them for you guys but for time purposes I'm just gonna do the one that will actually get carved so I'm gonna move those at these uh, I don't want to I don't want to delete them I want to move them out for a moment and I'm just gonna I'll leave them on here I'm gonna just move them off of my workspace for the moment <clears throat> all right this one here this pattern is uh, more long than it is tall I could rotate it 90 degrees but that would probably look a little funky because I want it to kind of look like it's wrapping all the way around the board so I'm gonna just kind of uh, scale this down a bit And I want to center it in um, my project area. And then I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to drag, holding my control key down, I'm going to drag a copy and just snap to the center of the rectangle there. Uh, oh, hold down the control key while you're doing that. Hold down the control key. I'm going to snap to the center of this panel. There's a snapping point at the center right there. Okay. All right. So with that, I need to create uh, the rabbits on the back, which are already done. And I just need to create the tool pass. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, select this model here and this model here and we're gonna go over to the tool pass this is going to be a V carve uh, like before flat depth of an eighth of an inch 60 degree V bit 0.125 in mill rinse and repeat and so this is gonna be uh, the side panel alternate design 60 DEG V bit calculate all right let's reset that preview and um, <clears throat> let's uh, spin this thing around and preview that selected toolpath ah 
Not the selected toolpath, you goofball. The visible. Visible, not selected. Let's try that one more time. Preview the visible toolpaths. Visible, not selected. Selected means what, what toolpath is highlighted in that list. Visible means what you can physically see in that visible toolpath. Okay. And again, uh, remember, uh, I chose uh, the 16th inch end mill uh, for the last ones because it cleaned up much better and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and hit select real quick. And I'm going to change to my 16th inch end mill. And I'm going to recalculate that so I can, you know, uh, clean that up a little bit in there. Uh, it's going to be one toolpath that's running, but my 16th inch end mill is going to be doing the pocketing versus an 8th inch end mill just because it'll be able to get into there a little tighter, you know, spots and stuff. Um, but absolutely not necessary at all. You could use your eighth inch end mill. Uh, preview the uh, visible tool pass one more time to go in there and really clean that up. And so that, that, that can get to a majority and much more uh, majority hold your control key down by the way if you guys want to drag this uh, 3d left to right up or down you know dragging side to side uh, almost like paying it your control key all right so yeah that looks really good uh, with that 16th inch cut and everything it's gonna be a pretty looking box all right so now we've got that let's go ahead and um, <coughs> on this board I need to uh, make a copy of my alignment pin because it's not going to be way down here, right? Remember that? Uh, so I'm going to control key and just make a copy of that and drag it over. I could have drawn it, draw, drew another circle, but it's just as easy for the control key. And now I'm going to turn on my reference lines for my board. This is my board here. And so I want to move my, you know, uh, my alignment pin hole on the end there and I want to go to the alignment tool alignment tool and make sure that it's centered up and down which it is uh, and then of course I've already got you know a good hole right there which will work just fine so that's going to be my alignment pin holes uh, for this short board so let's uh, create a drilling tool path for them. And this is going to be drill or alignment pin, not drill. Uh, alignment pins, side panels, side panels, 0.25 EM in mil. All right, cutting all the way through one inch deep. Yes, that is correct. So there's my alignment pin holes. All right, awesome sauce for that. Okay, now um, my profiles for my two side panels need to get copied to the other side of the board because I'm doing my profile cut last. So copy to other side with those two selected. And... Um, now we can move over to the back side. So on the back side here, I should have um, no rabbit pockets. So what all layers do I have turned on? Let's turn off the reference lines. Let's turn off the rabbit, back rabbit and vectors and everything. Um, and uh, we still need to draw the two rabbits and vectors for the side panels. So I'm going to add a new layer and this is my rabbits. Rab. Did I spell rabbits? Rabbit. Rabbit. Rebate. Rebate. Uh, side panel. And with that layer active, meaning it's highlighted in black bold text and everything, and I can read it up here. Then I want to draw my, you know, um, my mortises for the bottom. 
Now my mortises are uh, or rabbits, 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 rabbits. My uh, rabbits are for that bottom panel. And that bottom panel is only a quarter of an inch wide. Okay, uh, so uh, that's really all I want. Uh, you know, for the um, for my rectangle to be. So on the height, it's going to be 0 0.25. 0 0.25, and then uh, it's already set to the length of five and a quarter, and so that will be there. And now I can zoom in uh, and. I'm gonna just come over and grab this corner of the vector line, not the white points or the, you know, the rotate nodes, you know, points and everything while I'm in transform mode. But I'm gonna grab this corner and I'm gonna snap it down to this bottom of this corner here. And while I'm there, I'm gonna grab that corner and I'm gonna hold down my control key and I'm going to drag a copy of that over to this corner okay so we've got both of those rabbits now I need to, my my bit needs to extend beyond the panels uh, on three sides you know the two sides and down here on the bottom so I don't have a little any radius or, or you know crazy stuff so in transform mode all I'm gonna do is hold down my shift key to keep it centered and grab this middle white box here and just extend it out ever so slightly. It doesn't have to be very much um, so that the bit passes that. All I care about is half the diameter of the bit can pass you know, that point to create a nice straight line here. Now by holding my shift key, it extended the other side for me. Okay, And now over here, I, don't, I want to grab this middle node or point and I want to bring this out a little bit, but I do not want to hold the shift key for this one because of the simple fact that I want just the bottom span to move. And so I'm just going to pull it out just a little bit so the bit can clear. All right. Um, now, the same thing here, transform mode. I'm going to grab this and pull this out a little bit. And I'm going to hold down my shift key for the side ones. Pull that out. Okay. Ever so slightly. All right. Now I need to turn the layer back on um, that has my uh, vectors for the profile cuts, which are these guys right there. They're already there. I'm looking at them and I'm like, I got to pull out the vectors. Okay. So with that, let's go ahead and create our pocket cuts. So um, we'll do the mortises first. Rabbits. Why do I keep saying mortises? Sorry, guys. I got mortise on the brain. All right. So it's going to be a pocket tool path, and it's only going to cut 3 eighths of an inch deep, 0.375, starting at zero. Uh, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. Um, we're going to just raster that cut, and then we're going to, this is going to be the uh, bottom rabbit for side panel, 0.25 in mil. I name in my tool pass because those default names of V-carve one, V-carve two, V-carve three, V-carve four, pocket cut one, you know, they get, they get kind of uh, confusing as to what's what. So naming the tool pass will kind of, you know, help you determine what is what, you know? Um, and uh, the, so those rabbits are cut. So if we were to preview that selected toolpath, you would see those little rabbit cuts there. And then now let's create the profile cut for our side panel. This is gonna be a profile cut. Oh, we're going to cut uh, three quarters of an inch through, starting at zero, the top of the board. Uh, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. Uh, we are going to be on the outside of the cut. I will be using a spiral ramp, so I want to make sure that my tool plunge rate and feed rate match, just like before, because of the spiral ramp. I'm going to name this Parental Profile Side Panel. 0.25 
and I want to add some tabs to this. I want to add some tabs to this. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to put a tab here and here. And I'm going to put a tab here, here, and right across from each other. Even though there's quite a bit of space in there, I'm still going to line them up pretty well with each other. And then here and here. All right. We're going to calculate that tool path. And we're going to uh, preview that. Phenomenal. And so now, now you guys, you're seeing, you're seeing, you're seeing this other half of the board that's not cut and everything. Uh, that won't be there because that board's not going to be that long. It's going to go probably about a eighth or a quarter right past this hole right here. And that board's going to be that short. It's not going to be this long. So, um, no, there's my side panels for the uh, jewelry box. Okay. And now with those done, uh, we've got a quick moment to focus on the lid. Now, my box is 12 by 6. 12 by 6. Um, and... Uh, you know, I could almost cut the lid. I could almost cut the lid out of that. How wide is my board? I think my board is uh, my outside dimensions of my board. My box is 12 by 6. So I could actually, if I did do the long board, I could cut the lid out of it too. Yeah, because I don't. I'm not going to have any overhang on the lid. Sometimes. Sometimes I like to have a little bit of overhang on the lid, um, but no. All right, so then we're going to draw that out. So we're going to draw out, and I want to go, I'm going to type in the number 12 for the width, comma, 6 for the height, enter, and draw out that 12 by 6 board there. Uh, I'm going to make sure that it is on the, you know, centered but I'm gonna move it over onto the wood. So yeah, I'm going to, um, so I am gonna end up using two 26 inch panels uh, if I put the lid into the mix here. So, which is fine, that's great. That's, that's not a problem at all. Um, I just need to uh, change my alignment pin hole placement and put it down here at the end of the board. Uh, but everything else can stay the same. See how things work out, man, when you plan it? <laughs> Not really. Okay, so let's switch back over to the front side. Oops, I forgot to make a copy of my vector there. Copy to other side. All right, so on that vector there, uh, I need to offset it inward for where I'm going to put my decoration and my name and stuff. I'm going to put someone's name on here. You don't have to. It could be something like the Paradise Box where there's no name at all, but I like to do a little name. So I want to offset it inward, uh, create sharp corners a half of an inch. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I gotta remember, uh, remind me when I flip it over to create my mortise hinges on the back side of, uh, for the lid, for the lid part of the hinges. Um, bum, 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 bum. I'm thinking, okay. All right, so we've got that. And I want to, um, I'm gonna to try to snap to the center point. That's the one thing about smart snapping with uh, um, the Vectric V9. It's pretty pretty cool stuff. So I'm gonna go 5.5, comma 1.5. Five. Enter. And I'm going to take this and snap 
me wake up that node there. There we go. Snap that to there. That's where my name is going to go, right in there. But I want to do a crosshatch pattern along this lid. So I'm going to take and draw a line. And I'm going to draw a line. Doesn't matter where. I want to go a little bit past it. But I'm going to do a uh, crosshatch. And so the... Uh, I want to go to the longest point from my center here. Center to center. Snap. Center to center. And now I want to take that line and I want to um, offset it. And I want the spacing to be about a little more than an eighth of an inch, uh, you know, probably about 0.15 or, you know, maybe uh, 0.1875. A little bit bigger. Yeah, I'll go 1875, 3 sixteenths. And I'm going to offset outward for, or inward first. It doesn't matter which way you go, but I'm going to offset inward. And I'm just going to keep clicking the offset button until all of those lines are drawn. Okay, as far as I can go. Um, I'm then going to come back and select that center line again. And now I'm going to offset outward, making sure select new is checked. This is what makes this possible, that select new, because it selects the next line as you go. And I'm going to offset that outward as far as it can go okay all right now if I select all of these vectors and I deselect my inside box my inside box my outside box all right if I group them together they're grouped together now I can mirror them mirror them create a mirror copy i'm not going to flip about job center but i'm going to flip horizontally uh, to create that cross hatch pattern okay you guys see that all right all right all right all right now um the with that uh cross hatch pattern and everything um, I need to trim all this excess. I need to clear all this excess away uh, from the uh, from my borders and everything. And the uh, best way to do that, let me select um, both of those. All right, I'm going to group those together as one item, those two items, those those two cross hatches, and I'm going to select my boundary, my boundary last. Okay, I've got those two cross hatches and my boundary last. And I want to come over here and, you know, you have all types of different weld and trim and tools like that. Well, the weld would actually delete all the stuff in the middle, so we don't want to weld. Um, subtract the second vector from the first you know we could do that but we don't want to do that we don't want to do the keep overlap we want to go into the trim tool and we want to clear everything outside of the boundary and the boundary is the last item you click so that way when I click it will clear everything on the outside of that boundary alright now I'm gonna group those together because it ungrouped them while they're selected um, and once again, while they're grouped together, I'm going to select the boundary for this rectangle where my nameplate is going to go. And I'm going to go into that trim tool and I'm going to clear everything inside of the boundary and remove that. Okay. So now I have a decorative, nice little uh, crosshatch pattern, you know, on my. Uh, box of where I could put a name. Now, you might say, well, if you got flowers going all the way around, how does a crosshatch fit into it? You know, it does. It probably wouldn't look right. Uh, you know, wouldn't it be smarter to use the uh, the the floral pattern with a name and everything in there? Well, by Jove, you would be probably pretty much right. Uh, so we are going to do that. I want to do the floral pattern, but I wanted to show you how you could quickly and easily create a crosshatch pattern. And this would be a profile cut toolpath. Okay, your your vectors here. Um, we would select all of our vectors except for the outside boundary. 
and except for the inside boundary. Okay. And so on our, uh, you know, crosshatch, that's a profile toolpath. And I typically would use a, to get like almost like a diamond pattern and all, I would use a V bit, not an end mill. Uh, and you're 60, 90 degree, you're going to get wider angles uh, of those little pyramids with a 90 degree V bit uh, versus, you know, a 60. So, um, uh, but I'll use a 60 degree V bit. You can use a 90. Like I said, they'll just get wider and stuff. Uh, you know, it might even look better with a 90. We'll find out. Uh, so I'm going to click OK on that. And I want to be on the line, on the line. Uh, I want to cut depth of, I'm only going to carve this in probably maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe more. We'll look at a sixteenth and see if we want to go deeper. But I'm going to go ahead and call this crosshatch. And I don't want the bit, the profile bit coming in, cutting into, you know, these edges, especially the edges of this and kind of tearing up my nice, pretty... Uh, nice rectangular border that's around the edge and in the middle and everything. I want a nice looking frame. So one of the things that I can do is just like before, I can take this line. This is my, um, you know, my outer boundary line, and I can offset a line inward. Oh, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch. Ah, let's go an eighth of an inch. 0.125. Inward. Nah, that's too much. That's, we don't need to be that far out. Let's go a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, 0 0.625 point. Make sure you put that period in there. And uh, there we go. And um, same thing here. I can take this. Uh, rectangle and I can offset that outward that same sixteenth of an inch which I probably should have done before I trimmed everything and all that stuff but let's go ahead and do it now um, I'm gonna select my uh, crosshatch pattern I should have grouped it together but I didn't so give me a second and let me uh, turn off my borders okay and let me group this together while I'm there group and if I select my that outside vector here, then I can go ahead and use my trim tool and clear everything inside of that boundary to get rid of that kind of that. So that's going to offset my diamond pattern off the my my main rectangle here. So when I delete this one, I don't need that one anymore. Uh, it leaves that nice little uh, offset from around there. It doesn't come right up to it. Same thing here. If I uh, select my it always ungroups it. Um, hold down my shift key and turn off my boundaries. I'm going to group those together. I'm going to select that inside boundary there and tell it to clear everything outside of it. Get rid of that. And then now I can get rid of that line. And so, oh, got a little bit of a speck right there. I don't want that little speck right there. So we'll delete that. Uh, we'll examine uh, things. Make sure there's no other little specks anywhere on the corners. All right. So with this profile cut, I can go ahead and uh, turn off these two boundaries right here. With my V bit, I can go ahead and run that profile cut 16 minutes and I can calculate that cross hatch. Let's spin this board around so you can see it. And uh, we can preview that selected toolpath. It's 925, guys. We might this might even be a part three kind of thing. I don't know. All right, so let's take a look at that. Um, you know, pretty cool crosshatch pattern texture and all that we've that we've created. Um, and uh, you know, very nice. Now, if I wanted to. All of these little ends here, these little overlaps and stuff, I could do a nice V carve all the way around the edge and kind of profile those out, uh, you know, to do a nice little V cut uh, to kind of finish that off so they don't look like they're dead ending into nothing, um, you know, on the both ends. But I, you know, 
I like it. Because I like it. So let's see what would happen if I V-carve this. Oh, let's see here. Yep, I'm going to undo the two deletes that I just did. Oh no, uh, I need that. Yeah, I'm going to run a V-carve toolpath. Let me offset this one back out uh, 16th of an inch uh, outward. All right, <coughs> I'm going to run a profile cut on, uh, might as well put it into the rest of these. I'm just going to select this inner rectangle here and this one here and profile cut that. So calculate and let's preview that cut and see how it cleaned up the edges. Should have uh, given us a nice defined edge all the way around on the inside and the outside. Yeah. So we have a nice, you know, defined edge, you know, and it finishes off those diamonds very, very well looks much better all right gives me a little bit of a standoff you know my little uh, center piece here let's move that over and zoom into it <coughs> gives a little bit of a standoff uh, with that angle cut on my center piece and uh, yeah it looks very good it's a very nice looking pattern so you could do a whole jewelry box with cross hatches all the way around um, yeah yep 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 and all, yep, Tim. And remember, remind me, Tim, in just a minute. Uh, um, I can show you that uh, texture toolpath as well. All right. So with this, <coughs> that was our alternate one crosshatch pattern. So while those vectors are all selected, I'm going to go ahead and uh, group them together one last time, and I'm going to make a, or move them to a new layer, and I'm just going to call this top crosshatch. Layers is a great way to separate parts of your design. I don't want it to be visible right now, so I'm going to turn it off. But uh, you know, so you can start, you can work with other parts of your design. Now, Tim, just real quick, uh, since it only takes two seconds to do, uh, almost chip carving in that way. But now, when I think of chip carving, I think of almost like that spoon uh, hand hewn, uh, you know, cutting, and so. Uh, to for me to achieve that I use the texturing tool path and so I've got my two vectors selected here these are my boundaries and let's say that I was using a quarter inch or even a half inch ball nose I always use a ball nose end mill um, let me find my uh, uh, I'll use a quarter inch ball nose and my uh, start depth is, you know, going to be zero, top of the board. And I want to um, maximum cut depth. I don't want to cut too, too deep. Uh, just like my, you know, uh, chip carving, you know, eighth of an inch is going to be about maximum uh, with a minimum of a sixteenth of an inch. Little variance, you know, between all the cuts and everything. Um, I want my cut length to be about an inch. I want to overlap all the cuts, you know, maybe 10% uh, variation, you know, a 50% variation on that. I want to step over half the diameter of my bit. So I'm using a quarter inch bit, so I want to step over an eighth of an inch. And then I also want a variation on that. And I want my angle cuts to be at 10 degrees. Now, if I calculate uh, that toolpath, I don't, I don't, before I do, I don't want to be right up on my borders just like before. So I'm going to back off at least an eighth of an inch because I'm using a quarter inch diameter bit. Uh, so I'm going to back off from the edges about an eighth of an inch and I'm going to calculate that now. The edges of my, you know, my boundaries. I don't want to be up on those edges. And if I were to reset that preview um, and preview that selected toolpath. Now this is, now Tim, chip carving, you know, that straight, nice chip carve and everything, uh, straight lines and all, uh, that, I, I know exactly what that is, uh, but 
hand hewn. I don't. I think. I guess this is kind of like a hand carved type, you know, effect where you know you're. It's it's a hand carved versus a chip carve. Uh, chip carving is where you do those nice sharp straight lines. You're using a knife and you're cutting those things out and stuff. Now, me personally, with the hand hewn, this this bit here, I do not like the big diameter bits unless this was a big project. And with this being a small project, my preference would be an eighth inch end mill. Um, and so we might, Tim, we might be two different things because I know it is two different things. Hand hewn carving and uh, chip carving is two, you know, very different things. But uh, uh, when I say chip carving, it's me like chipping out all these chunks and stuff. Uh, so uh, I'm going to use an eighth inch ball nose. Uh, the the uh, quarter inch ball nose is just, just too big, too big. And I'm still going to use the same variations, except for I want the step over to be half the diameter, which is 0 0.0625. And um, I don't want to, I don't need to step that far away from my uh, boundaries uh, with that. So I'll go 0 0.0625 and calculate. <clears throat> And if I reset this preview and preview that toolpath, okay, we gotta, we've been running a little late tonight, guys. Sorry, we gotta get off here. Um, long, long glass. I like my, me personally, I like the texture that the eighth inch ball nose uh, gives me. And uh, let me add a little bit of color to that so you guys can kind of see, um, you know, that, uh, oh, not that color. <laughs> Uh, so you can kind of, well, you can't, now that color don't work either. Let me just change the uh, board from a maple to a cherry or my walnut. Not that walnut. Lord of mercy, Lenny, get to it. Walnut too. I don't know. Um, so you could do, you know, kind of a, uh, oh, that's, that's hard to see, huh? Cherry. That, that walnut's dark. I'm going to have to find a different walnut. Um, but you could do a, you know, kind of a textured uh, pattern with uh, your design, you know, whatever the case may be. You could pocket it out a little bit and put a texture in the bottom side, whatever the case may be. But what we're doing um, is we're going to put this pattern in the lid. So I'm going to take this pattern here and I'm going to drag it over. Double click on it to put it in transform mode. I'm going to drag it over and I should be able to snap to the center there. And um, did I snap to the center? There we go. And that's actually kind of a perfect fit on that lid. Almost like that was intended. Holy camoly. Now, I need to take, while that's selected, I'm going to select this inner boundary here, uh, and I'm going to do the same thing. I don't want it to go right up to, I don't want the bit going right up to this board, so I'm going to offset this outward um, a sixteenth of an inch. Oops, 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 what did I just offset? Everything. <laughs> Let's cancel that one. Sorry about that. I need to select this guy right here and offset him outward 16th of an inch there we go uh, because I want to select this pattern here and I want to remove remove all of the vectors with inside that rectangle that boundary I just created so again we're gonna click on this and we're gonna clear everything inside of that vector oh I did that and I had the other one selected. Clear inside. I pointed to it, but I didn't click on it. Clear inside that vector. There we go. So, and then now we can, um, you know, get rid of our uh, rectangular border. We don't need that. And so we have this carving. So now we can create our name. Let's get our name in there. And um, almost there. Come on. My text tool is arguing with me. Oh, I don't know if I want to use all capitals or not, but it's fine. And 
we're going to do a not a monotype cursiva. Monotype cursiva or script fonts don't look good when it's all capital letters. Um, and uh, you know, so but I'm not, so I'm doing all capitals. So we want a font uh, that is uh, you know that, that that can look good with with capital letters. So, and I want this to be uh, the text height to be one inch tall. And then I can move that over to there. And I'm just going to select on the outside boundary here, that boundary, and just make sure using the alignment tool that those are centered with one another. So now it is centered. It wasn't before when I dropped it in there. So uh, let's go ahead and create the tool path for this. So the um, let's select on my, I'm going to turn off my boundaries here. Okay, and I'm going to leave, I'm, I'm V carving this. Uh, I don't want uh, Jade to have a flat bottom, so I'm going to turn that off because this is going to have a flat bottom on the top. So uh, we're going to do a V carve toolpath, rinse and repeat from before. V carve toolpath. 0.125 cut depth, 60 degree V bit with a 16th inch end mill. We're going to calculate this. This is going to be the uh, top panel. And we're two, we're about three or four minutes away from being finished, guys. We're just going to calculate this. Uh, there's one open vector. One open vector. I don't like leaving a vector open because it might be something important, but I believe it's going to be one of these guys right here. Uh, so the best way to find your open vector is, and that those guys can be removed, they're actual junk, but uh, if we select all open vectors, um, it will select it, and if you can't visibly see it, you know, if you can't find it, like, okay, which one did it select? We just told the software to select it. So now if we zoom to that selected vector, it will zoom into it for us. And there it is, that simple line. So uh, that's an insignificant line. It doesn't need to be anywhere. So I can delete that. And if we zoom out, if I just use my mouse to roll out, let's see where that thing was hiding himself. Um, he was hiding himself way in the corner of that design. So it didn't need to be there anyway. All right. So let's grab again. Let's grab all of our vectors that we want to carve. Um, this, this, and this off. I'm going to group those together so I don't have to keep clicking like that. And we're going to calculate. This is a... Uh, I'll leave that blank. I always leave it blank because it's going to create two tool paths anyway. <clears throat> Almost there. All right. So now we can reset that preview and uh, preview that selected tool path. Oh, geez, Louise. Um, not selected toolpath, visible toolpath. Reset the preview and select the visible toolpath. All right, let's, uh, yeah, looks good. Okay. Let's uh, let's cut the let's do the V carve tool path for the name. This is going to cut straight down, so no flat depth on this. Just using a sixty degree V bit, uh, and um, sixty degree V bit. Preview that. good you could also turn it around to where it's raised up if you want it raised up a little bit uh, to um, you know versus carving in but I think you know carving in on in the, for this occasion 
uh, it would look good. It might look good the other way too since everything's 3D. So if I did want to raise that up, then I would take this vector here. I would offset it inward. Um, I want a nice border around there, so I'd offset it inward an uh, eighth of an inch. And I would go into that V-Carve toolpath with these two selected and this would use a flat depth now that I've surrounded the design with a boundary. It's very important. Uh, it's very important that you, and I don't need to go in an eighth of an inch. Let's give it a little bit of breathing room. I'm just gonna offset, I, un I deleted the what I just created. We're gonna offset it inward a sixteenth of an inch. Um, Boop. Point zero six two five. There we go. All right. So with that new boundary and this uh, name selected, flat depth. Uh, definitely want a flat depth. And for when I do raise names and stuff, uh, you know, I'm gonna do a point one five. That's my magic number with uh, raised names and stuff. So I want to use a uh, flat bit. I've been using a 16th inch end mill. I might as well stay consistent. So I only have, so I minimize my bit changes. And um, we're gonna leave this blank because it'll create two tool paths for me so I can fill in those information later. All right, so if I reset the preview and I preview the top panel and the name uh, visible tool pass. We'll see how she looks. Here it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Uh, yeah, we'll leave that like that. Okay, so what do we got left to do? We've got to flip over uh, to the bottom side. Uh, we need to create the profile cut. We need to create the mortise slots, uh, the two little rectangles, and we need to change our alignment pin positioning. So that's the two things we need to do. And uh, I'll be sure to do those with the alignment pins and not, not a big deal right at this moment. We just need to move the hole down to this end of the board. But where on my hinge, my uh, the hinge, we have, uh, remember from the panel, we moved in an inch and a half and an inch and a half. So again, I'm going to use my guidelines uh, to help myself out. I'm going to snap to that edge and I'm gonna delete these other guidelines I don't need them anymore so I'm gonna uh, delete these old guidelines for that other project I'm just gonna move this one over and snap it to there alright so I need to move in uh, I need to create another guide relative uh, to its position uh, positive an inch and a half because I'm moving to the right so I want to create that um, new guide there and then I want to right click on this guide and relative to its position I want to move to the negative position because I'm moving to the left and create that guide all right awesome now my rectangle my mortises uh, I got to make sure that when my lid closes I got to look at your letters here you see Jade the underscore want to make sure the name is facing the right way so my mortises need to be back here this is the back of the lid um and everything so uh my mortises are one inch by half of an inch and i'm going to double click on that to throw it in transform mode and i'm just going to snap to that line and i'm going to snap to that line now remember um I want I don't want the uh, wood to go um, 
my hinge, my actual hinge is a half of an inch and then I've got that part there. So I wanna extend this out just a little bit, just a little bit past my board uh, so the bit has enough room to clear off this edge. And so with that, I can take and grab this edge of the line, hold down my control and alternate key because I'm in transform mode and I can drag and snap to that line. Okay, so they're perfectly positioned. And now with that, this is getting a pocket cut, a pocket cut tool path. Uh, we're cutting to a depth of a sixteenth of an inch. And we're using a quarter inch end mill like before and um, calculate. Now on this one, I'll have to uh, clean off three of the edges. Uh, I'll have to click clean off three of the edges if I made my little uh, mortises long enough to fit off Yeah, I'll have to clean off three of the edges now. You see I got a little radius at the end uh, Let me move that up so you can see it. I Got a little radius at the end. I don't want to have to mess with that. So I just need to make my mortises just a little bit holding a little bit just a little bit past it and I'm gonna recalculate that tool path. Well, let me rename it before I cast since I'm gonna recalculate it. This is the lid mortise, mortise, point two five in mil. All right, we can calculate that out. All right, we can preview that selected tool path. And when it now you can see now we got those nice straight cuts you know we had to extend past so that bit could clear past it now i do have to chisel out in my corners but that's real easy to do uh to, to chisel out those corners and so that's done well our final thing is is our profile cut our profile cut and so uh with that let's grab our profile and we're going to go into a profile tool path cutting 0.75 with a quarter inch end mill i am going to be on the outside of the cut uh, i do want to add some tabs i'm going to put a tab click on oop not the 3d tab I'm going to hit the edit tab button. I'm going to throw a tab here and here. And here. Here. All right. And I'm going to use a spiral ramp. I'm a big fan of spiral ramps lately. It makes a nice clean pass. Make sure that my tool uh, plunge depth or plunge rate and my feed rate are the same for that spiral tool path and this is going to be the uh, lid profile point two five in mil calculate and we can profile cut that out All right, so that's our lid. It's got the mortise hinges on the back side, um, or hinge mortises on the back side. Uh, let's take a look at our final profile for our side panels. Um, and uh, let's take a look at uh, everything as a whole on that. Preview the uh, visible tool pass. Okay. All right. So that's the uh, missing the rabbit. I'll drop it. Bottom rabbit. There it is. Preview that selected. That visible tool down. All right. So 
So on my bottom side, I should have um, the, let's flip this over. I should have my rabbits there. There we go. All right, so those are done. Now let's switch back over to the top side so I can see those tool paths and everything. And we should have our um, side panel alternate design V-carve. And preview the visible tool paths on that. Here it comes. All right. So all in all, this is going to probably be a pretty nice looking box. I'm not sure. You guys will have to give me your opinion on it and everything, uh, you know, after we make. Now, this is just the outside guts of the box. Um, uh, you know, creating the models or, and things for the decorative feet. You know, I want to have feet on this. Um, the inside little uh, grid and dividers and everything, all of that. Uh, we can do in you know parts three, four, and five. This can be an ongoing project because there's a lot of little things that we can do uh, inside this jewelry box and stuff. You know, um, so uh, but this is just a simple, basic uh, the case for you know the the outside, you know the top and you know the sides and uh, the top. Uh, the bottom panel is going to be a quarter inch panel. We'll cut. We'll create that in a different project or just cut that out on the table saw because there's nothing that goes with it. Um, unless I want to cut a grid in the bottom panel so my dividers will go into that grid, then I would cut it on the CNC. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, 9.52. I don't see a lot of people chatting or asking questions. Uh, so if you have any questions, now's the time because I'm going to give ourselves uh, just a few minutes to look for questions. And then we're going to call it a night. And we'll pick this up another day with, uh, you know, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll look at making some decorative feet for it uh, and show you how to model uh, the feet. And then we'll um, look at the uh, inside grid area and stuff. So all in all, uh, not a bad looking box. So that's our side panel and our top. And if we wanted to uh, reset that preview, we can look at our uh, front panels, front and back. So our sides and everything, all of that wonderful stuff. Um, it's gonna be a nice looking box. All right, let's see what we got here. I don't see a lot of people popped in over there. Um, all right. If your sides are six inches wide um, and you have a three eighths inch rabbit front and back, would your top need to be six and three quarters? No. Um, my my side, uh, it, my outside diameter of the box after full assembly is six inches by 12. My inside diameter is different with the rabbits and everything, but my outside diameter uh, of the box dimensions fully assembled with the rabbits and everything is six by 12. And so that's what the lid's going to be. Okay. Um, Joe, uh, hopefully that answered your question, but you know, uh, Joe had a valid point, you know, with, with the three eighths inch rabbit, three eighths and three eighths, you know, that's three quarters, right? Well, my, with that three quarters, um, you know, you have to account for that and everything. So, uh, the, uh, and I did, and I, I accounted for that in my side panels. My side panels are only five and a, um, five and a quarter, uh, all together. So, or five and something, but overall my outside dimensions of the box outside dimensions are six by 12. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I don't have the front and back toggle buttons. I do have 9.012. Uh, the front and back toggle button should be up here in your view next to your three point tabs. Uh, if, uh, if they're not, then they could be turned off in the options. Um, in the options under edit menu, you can look and see if uh, they are turned off. 
Uh, let's see here. Where would that be at? Print 3D view shaded screen. Uh, let's click OK on that and let's look at um, our snap options, display, display grid, uh, tangent, horizontal, object bound, intersection, arc, span. With, uh. So somewhere, if you if you do not see this up here next to your layers, you do not see these two toggle buttons. Um, then uh, you we may need to look at updating your uh, software a little bit because I don't know where in the world they would turn on and off view here we go view multi-sided right here under view multi-sided make sure that is checked make sure that is checked okay uh, make sure view multi-sided is checked so you can view that um, we want our color shaded view uh, let's see here. But your toggle button should be there. Uh, if not, uh, get with me, Larry, and we'll take a look. Uh, but if you have 9.012, you might want to refresh that update. Um, because it should be right up at the top in your view bar on the top left. Top left. All right, because that also shows you how you're flipping your board, too. Um, very nice looking box. Looking forward to seeing you on Friday in Springfield. Yes, yes, absolutely. Look forward to seeing you guys in Springfield as well. Um, Jared, uh, the buttons are only two on the side jobs. Um, uh, Jared, were you answering, um, Larry's question? Oh yeah, uh, sorry. Yes, he was. Jared was answering your question, uh, Larry. Those buttons are only going to be seen when you're in a two-sided job. Thank you, Jared, uh, for pointing that out to him. Uh, those are only going to be seen in a two-sided job. All right, so let's see if I missed anything else. All right, guys and girls. Well, it looks like everyone's uh, questions. If I missed any questions, I'll go back and review uh, you know, the comments and questions and stuff. And if I miss anything, uh, I will uh, definitely throw in the answer and stuff. But I want to thank you very much for uh, taking the uh, time to watch this class and stuff. And I um, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, good, Larry. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, double-sided jobs is you'll see those buttons. Uh, certain tools turn on and certain tools turn off depending on the type of, you know, setup you have on your uh, job settings from a one uh, project job to one-sided project to a two-sided project. All right. Okay. I'm going to save this before I lose it because I actually want to carve this box. It actually looks pretty nice. So I want to save the changes to it. And uh, I'm going to create the other tool pass too. And that way we can, in another class, we can talk about the medallions for those openings in the center. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, this has been another episode of Spindle TV. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you at the shows. If you're going to join me uh, in Springfield, uh, definitely, definitely do so. Come up and say hi. And um, look at our show schedule on digitalwoodcarver.com. And if there's any other shows out there that you're able to attend, Come on out. I'd love to see you. All right. Until next time, I'll see you soon.